If you're looking for a little inspiration in the kitchen, I know I always am. Well, I recently had a chance to chat with Gainesville native Amanda Wilbanks, author of Southern Baked, celebrating life with pie, to get some tips and a few recipes. Take a look. Amanda, thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to close my eyes and take a deep breath, and I'm just going to pretend I am in your kitchen with you, uh, enjoying those wonderful scents of the savory pie. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. I am very excited to be here. All right, well, before we get to baking, let's talk about how you grew up in North Georgia, and you kind of grew up with this love of baking. Who was your biggest influence? I would say my biggest influence was my grandmother. I grew up cooking in the kitchen with her every Sunday after church. I would make the homemade biscuits from scratch and the homemade gravy. I have scars on my hand from making gravy. She's really, my grandmother Betty is who I learned to cook from. And my mother-in-law Sandy influenced all of the pie making and it's kind of how my pie making, I guess, empire or career began. <laughs> Right, so today you are going to make a great pie for us. What I love is I always love a sweet pie, fruit pie, apple cherry, but today you're making a savory one. This sounds incredible. Tell our audience uh, what it is and what the ingredients are. Yes, so the pie I'm going to be making today is a breakfast quiche, which you could make um, for brunch or you can even serve it. I know some of us like to have dinner or breakfast for dinner. So it's an yeah. easy option. It's got vegetables in it, um, which is great and it's vegetarian. So let's get started. So first we're going to start with some onions and some mushrooms. I've given those a quick chop right here. You want to just get them into a little bit smaller pieces. I always not recommend putting them in whole, but I leave them big enough so if somebody wanted to pick them out, they could always pick them out. And what I've done is I've taken these, I've cut them up, and I've got them sauteing on the stove right now with a little bit of butter. And in the meantime, I have a pack of frozen spinach. You just get this out of the freezer section. I have let it thaw out and then I've drained it. There's a lot of moisture in spinach. You don't want that in your quiche or it's gonna make your quiche runny. So I'm letting that sit right there. I've got my eggs that I've mixed up in my mixing bowl right here. I'm gonna add some Greek yogurt, a little bit of healthy that we're gonna put into this. This is gonna give it that nice, decadent, rich taste. You could also use sour cream if you're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of nutmeg to give it some warmth and flavor. I'm gonna reach back here and grab my mushrooms and onions off of the stove, which have been sauteing. You wanna let your mushrooms get nice and um, softened and your onions just to kind of get translucent. If you like them a little more charred, give them a nice char. It'll add to the sweetness. Yum, Amanda, this looks relatively simple. Well, it really is. We'll add our spinach in so we get our healthy and our green, and then we are going to mix all that up and pour it into our pre-baked pie shell. The great thing about this recipe is that it makes two pies, so you can make one, bake it, have it for breakfast, save one in your freezer for later. And then all you're gonna do is add your mix directly into your pie shell, pop it in the oven, and bake it for about 30, 35 minutes. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna bring it out and have this decadent, beautiful, delicious looking spinach and mushroom quiche that everyone is going to enjoy. Oh, I love that. And I do like, as you said, that it makes enough to have one now, save one for later. You know, it seems like we're always just uh, pressed for time. And I don't know about you, but I've run out of ideas during quarantine. You know, my, my recipes are getting stale. So to be able to pull that out and have something ready for the family, I love it. And the next recipe you're making is one of my favorites, and that's waffles. Yes, so these are my homemade waffles. What I love about this recipe is they're very light and fluffy, but they still have have enough of a chew to them. I also like it because I have picky kids. I have a 10 year old, a five year old and a one year old. One will eat waffles, one will eat pancakes. So you can also use this recipe for pancakes, which is very nice and it makes it very versatile. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna crack your eggs. You've got three eggs in a mixing bowl right here. You're gonna mix those up and you're gonna add in melted butter. So you wanna make sure your melted butter is cool before you add it so you don't end up cooking your eggs. So add in your melted butter, give it a good whiz, and then you've got your wet ingredients, your sour cream and your um, buttermilk. Buttermilk makes these light and fluffy, but still gives them a little bit of a tang. I like to add my cream into my buttermilk, give it a good stir, and then you are gonna alternate between your wet and your dry ingredients. So we're gonna start with dry, add a little wet, give it a nice mixture, and you're gonna end with the dry mixture. Always end with the dry, 
And then all you have to do is pour it into your waffle maker and make your waffles. Oh, I love it, Amanda. Thank you so, so much for your time and your expertise. We so, so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me and letting me share my pie tips. Ah, she's so great. Make sure you follow her on Instagram at Amanda Wilbanks Bakes. I love it. Thank you, Amanda.